what's up people i am back for another video we are finally continuing on with the bond franchise we are doing casino royale which is regarded as some of people's favorite bond movie it's up there for me um i have a couple hold on looking for some um but i have a like i only have really one gripe and that's more some of the action and i hear it gets worse in the later ones but i feel like there's a little bit of it of, like, and it's more like the close quarters fighting not necessarily like the shooting or the the chase scenes i think they got those right i just think it was too because this was 2006 so this was like several years after the first um you had like i think there was two jason born movies by this point because i think the first one was like oh one or something like that and then the second one was like oh four or um oh three one of those <clears throat> i felt the, the close quarters action like the meleeing like the fist fighting basically it was too fucking jason born for me at times it Without, like, the, obviously the jump cuts. That's about the only difference. But it had that same kind of style at times. And But aside from that, I thought this was a nice little... Not reboot, but, like, I guess it's kind of a reboot. But, like, a a retelling. My issue with... um uh Daniel Craig isn't a bad Bond, at least in this movie. I don't know how he is in the other movies. So, basically, next week when we when we get to Quantum of Solace, I'm basically going in blind on those because I've never seen any of the Craig. I know No Time to Die is shit because I know how it ends, but I've never actually seen any of the Craig Bonds after Casino Royale. So going in blind for that. I hope they're decent, but we'll see. Um, But this one was a nice little story. Like we learned how he got his double O name. I thought that opening scene where he kills Drayden, I think is the dude's name. You know, the black and white scene. I actually would not have minded if they did the whole film in that style. But So Bond um, then uh, goes to, uh, not Africa. Or I'll just say some third world country to get a bomb, to, um, get a bomber, kills him. And Bond uh, has to stop Le Chiffre, played by Mads Mikkelsen, who... I could be pronouncing his name wrong, but he is a great villain. He's probably, if we're going, like, he's up there for me with, uh, uh, maybe not as good as Goldfinger, but I think he's Blow or Blofeld, but I like him. He, I like, I mean, he's up there with Sean Bean, in my opinion, from uh, GoldenEye. Like, those are, to me, the, when I think best Bond villains, those are, like, the four, and I would put him in there. I think he was good. That scene, it was on a comfortable watch where he tries to force Bond to give him the password. Where he, like, whips his nuts. Ugh, I'll admit, that was hard to watch. Even as a kid, because I saw this one in theaters back in 2006. And yeah, that scene, even at that time, was just like, ugh. He was such a good villain. Um, Eva Green as Vesper, great love interest, even though she kind of fucks him over in the end. Um... It was cool seeing Judy Dench back as M. I thought that was awesome that they kept her around. Just to me, really, she was she was the best besides Brosnan. I think she was one of the best things about those movies was her, her M. For me, she is M. No disrespect to the M's from the other movies. I just to me, Judy Dench, especially in this movie, some of her scenes just with Bond, like the scene at her house where Bond had broken in, or even the scene later in the end of the film where Bond is back in the full, back in the field because, you know, he initially retires from MI6. Um, I did like, like, I felt like the, her and Brosnan, not Brosnan, her and Craig had good chemistry. And Craig, okay, let's get in, let's talk about Craig as Bond. In this movie, I i don't know how he is in the rest, but I've heard what happens in some of the rest. Like he's basically kind of mopey about his dead wife, which just on the sounds of it, I'm not a big fan just to me this could have been like you should have just had that be a trigger of why bond doesn't get attached to him and that's it it didn't need to be 
this whole carryover. I'm hope and that's what it's sounding like the later ones do. And who knows? I have to see it play out, but just on the sounds of it, it doesn't sound good. Um, but Craig in this one was good. He had his Bondisms. I even that opening the, that scene when he's um has the bomber dude in that chase scene. He felt like Bond in that. Uh, at, uh, the scene where he's playing Casino Royale with Le Chiff, very Bond like. Even especially in the end when he kills Mister White. No, not kills, but he shoots him in the knee. And then walks him in Bond, James Bond. And then the, this is such a cool ending. I think probably one of the coolest endings, in my opinion, to a Bond movie was that scene. Dude, get, Mr. White gets out of the car, thinks everything's all good, and then he realizes something's up. He gets shot in the knee. And then Bond says, excuse me, Bond says, uh, Bond, James Bond, and just holds the gun and then has the phone. Good shot. Great fucking shot. Um... So, um, I do like that Le Chiff doesn't have an over-the-top plan. He just, he basically, um, it's money. Kind of simple. Sometimes I do like that this movie tried to, I understand the purpose of this movie. I like Die Another Day, but I understand what they were going for. They wanted to kind of dial back the over-the-top plots, which it's fine, you know, it was the mid-2000s at this time, so Bond is going with the time, so they went with more of the just simple plot, um, Le Chiff has to make up money, basically he owes money to another bad guy, essentially. To Mr. White, I mean, there's that scene, um, where he meets Vesper, obviously Bond, you know the story, he falls in love with her, <coughs> Which at my six birth, <coughs> and I do like that little ending where you see it. It's like this happy ending. Bob Bond's married. <coughs> yet M informs him that the money was never returned, like the winnings <coughs> were never returned. And this is where he find out that Vesper kind of fucked him over, <coughs> but the people she worked with for Mister White turned on her. Bond tries to save her. She ends up basically killing herself. And I guess this movie is supposed to be like Bond's or not origin, but <clears throat> just in a way a little bit. But <clears throat> you even see how he gets the Astro Martin, which was cool. Um, like I just I overall love this movie. In my opinion, it has my favorite Bond song. Say my uh let's say say my name. Say uh Say no name. Um, I fucking love that song. Uh, I it, it's one of my favorite Bond, and it's not just because I love Chris Cornell, but it's just it. I love the little animation opening too. It was very classic Bond feeling. Like, even for like two thousand six, I like that they try to they, because I like don't get me wrong. I like I said this before. I like Die Another Day. I did not like the Bond song for that movie. I think it didn't fit. Madonna's song felt like a song that would be in like some like romantic comedy or something like a girly comedy basically it didn't fit Bond this song didn't even like the I actually really not just the song fit the little animation you know music video basically is great um but overall out of 10 I'd give this movie I'm gonna probably give it 8.5 I honestly my only actually no fuck it yeah 8.5 I don't think it's a full-on nine but I think there's a lot of positives. I think the action is good. The chase scenes. I think like a lot of the chasing, especially the car chases, are great. Um, Ves um, Vesper was a good Bond girl. Um, I'm fine with her. She was an agent, but she's not like a physical agent. Like when Bond um, gets attacked by a, a Le Chiffre's people, like bodyguards in the... The, the stairwell that was where i felt like the fight was the the close fighting it was too mis mission impossible not mission impossible uh, too uh born for me it was like i could see that being a jason born fight scene just to try to replace eva green with uh julia styles like literally it's the same thing that was my issue like with mainly the close quarters fighting but like the act like the chase scenes the uh, 
the scenes where he's shooting at people, that, that was Bond. You know, the scenes where he's driving his Astro Martin. Like, I think most, like I said, I like this movie. It's just that one little thing. And it's only really in that scene. There were some other scenes where I felt it a little bit, but I still feel like it tried to be, like, a mo a what, a, I guess, a modernized Bond for the time, you know, back in 2006. But overall, still a great movie. Granted, I have not seen the other movies, but there's a part of me that this should have just been a one-off, and then the rest of the Craig movies should have just been classic Bond. This should have just been basically a tale of why Bond doesn't form attachments. That's kind of what it should have been, and that's it. And then the rest of the movies are classic Bond. I'm going to still give him a chance. Who knows? I could. I might like Quantum Solace. I don't fucking know. But if it's just, like, sad Bond, I don't know if I'm going to be a fan of that. Like, oh, I might got married, so I'm going to be sad and depressed. No. Bond shouldn't be that. Well, just, like, just on the sound of it. I haven't seen the movie yet, I know, but... But anyway, and that's later on. But overall, this movie is great. Daniel Craig in this movie is a good Bond. And I think if they had let him be a good, like a classic Bond, I think he could have pulled it off of the scenes where, you know, the shaken, not stirred. You know, the scenes when he's having with Le Ship at the, when they're playing Casino Royale. That is Bond. Jeffrey Wright's in this movie. I thought he was a good character. Um, But yeah, like, Unono, I think, is the dude's name. Um, he's basically the guy that the ship actually owes owes the money to. Um, so I just feel like Craig has shown he could have been a good Bond, but I just if it is true, obviously I haven't seen them, but I think I've seen scenes. So yeah, I if, at least from what I remember seeing of the scenes of the later ones. They were very, like, Craig didn't, it didn't seem like they wanted to let him be, like, fun Bond. Because I think he could be. He could have been. Like, I really feel like, at least in this movie, he shows it. Like, especially in the, the specifically when they're playing Casino Royale. So, but anyway. Who knows? I'm going to wait and see when I watch those movies. Tomorrow, I am going to be doing... Reviewing Total Recall, which I can't wait. And then I guess I'll announce this now. Next Wednesday, I'm going to be doing another Arnold classic, True Lies. I, I haven't watched That's another one I haven't watched in forever. And I have been on an Arnold kick lately, so why not review that one? It makes sense. So yeah, I'll be doing that one next Thursday. Um, So tomorrow I'll be doing that. Um, Yeah, let's get into uh, Casino Royale. Like, <laughs> before I get into the review itself, <clears throat> I definitely review, definitely <coughs> um, recommend <coughs> Casino Royale. It's a good one. So the movie opens up. We see Bond perform his first kill. That basically the kill that made him an official double O when he killed Dryden. Drizden, I could be Dryden, I think is his name, who was a traitor of like basically MI6. <coughs> <coughs> Very cool little opening scene. Cool little fight scene, too. <coughs> Kills him in the shower. Like, strangles him with the, like, the cord. <coughs> and I love the black and white. I thought that was a cool little view. And I actually would not have minded if they did that the whole movie. I really wouldn't. I, I could have lived with that if they had did that the whole time. I remember watching it at the time. I think, like, Sin City had came out the year before. Wow, very Sin City looking. So I love that old black and white sequence. Um, then um, Bond is goes to um, is forced to retrieve a bomber, and uh, I'm just gonna say I know it's gonna sound racist, but in some African country, um, and um, we get a big chase scene. He grabs this guy. I think Malaka is his name, and basically he has to retrieve him alive, but he ends up killing him. And the group of others in, like, a big explosion. Thought it was a cool little scene. Um, and I get what they were going for. Because I'm, you know, reading the Wikipedia for this movie. They wanted to go for more, like, toned down the over-the-top stuff. 
But I think there was still a little bit. Like, he, this, you still have that big opening chasing. Granted, it wasn't in the opening. They did the whole... Maybe it wasn't black and white because it was in the past. I think that's why they did it. Um, But, so, Bond then gets admonished by M. And basically, he's... um Because he didn't take uh, Dresden alive. While this is going on, Le Schiff, who was introduced, causes... um um basically an accident happened because he needs money um then um um this is where bond meets vesper a british agent who's basically on the tail of schiff who uh causes a, a you know explosion um then yeah bond is then basically ordered to stop uh Le Schiff. And uh, this is where we get the... Cause this movie goes pretty quick. Even though it's like almost two and a half hours, it doesn't feel that long. Like, it, it goes really pretty much. Like, we're not long before we get to the... One thing I will admit I'm a little disappointed in, and I guess this is the beginning, there sh we didn't get a lot of... I wanted to see Q, and there wasn't a lot of like, oh, here's some cool tech. I kind of wanted a little bit of that, maybe in one scene. I feel like you could have done that scene and not be, like, over the top. So I kind of wanted that, but... Oh, and there's a scene where Bond uh, goes to M. This was after uh, he had uh, gotten some information about Le Chiffre. And, yeah, that was a really good scene. Um, her and... I thought her and Daniel Craig had some pretty good chemistry. Um... They have a very complicated relationship. I've always loved that about her. You know, yeah, she definitely shit talks Bond, but she knows his value. That's why she keeps him around, ultimately. I mean, I thought this one, this movie really showcased that. So, yeah, then this is where we get to the the scene uh, where they first play. Then Bond gets, a t uh, they kidnap a girl. Um, Le Chiff orders uh, one of his guards to, like, kidnap uh, some random girl. Bond saves her, and then we get a big, like, uh, action scene. This is where we get the stairwell fight, which the fight, it's not that the fight was bad, necessarily. It just did not feel like Fast and the, I was gonna say Fast and the Furious, holy shit. It didn't feel like James Bond to me. It was too, that straight up, when, like, I could see that in a Jason Bourne movie, or that type of action movie at the time. I get it, it was the time... And Bond is always supposed to adapt to whatever time period it is. And, like, the the Timothy Dalton ones were in the late 80s, well, mid to late 80s. So you had that, like, 80s somewhat action style. You know, and then the 90s, I think that kind of carried over a little bit with the Brosnan ones, too, a little bit. Where you had that, well, at least in specifically, mainly, um, GoldenEye and Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah, very still left over from that. 80s to 90s style action movie so i get it. they were adapting to the time so i guess they were like okay it's the 2000s so we got to do a little bit of that action with the fighting but um i just i think um it it for me i just think bond should have a certain fighting style and it should not be that born it doesn't fit his character that's just me. That's my only... And it's minor criticism. It doesn't ruin the movie. So yeah, so Bond ends up killing the guards. He then gets in the game. Um, Back in the game. I just love those scenes, man. When they're playing the game and they're actually like... Like there's just a little bit of plot going on. And just the... Even just the silent stares between Le Schiff and Bond is so good. Le Chiff, he, dude, yeah, Mads Mikkelsen really played his part in this movie. Not too over the top, but also, like, he was low-key scary in some scenes. That scene, which I'm gonna get to later, when he tortures Bond, like, yeah, he was, he was pretty scary in that scene, as a villain. So, and that's what makes, granted, I know it's a side tangent, but just mentioning Indy 5 really quick, it's just... He was so wasted in that because it's like he's a good actor. I mean, just and I know this is from like two thousand six, but it's like he was so fucking good in this movie. He was borderline. Like, I can understand why people, you know, he was Hannibal. I never actually watched the show, but I've 
I think I've seen a clip for, of him as Hannibal for, I've never seen the whole show, but I've seen a clip and I'm like, yeah, he's pretty good. He knows how to play a good villain. So it's just like, you see him wasted in that. But yeah, he was good. He was awesome in this. Um, I love his chemistry with Bond. Like you have, they have that, like he was a great foil to Bond. That there, the scene where getting to it now, where Bond gets poisoned because uh, Schiff poisons uh, his uh, martini, and Bond like starts freaking out. And I really think they did showcase Bond being poisoned perfectly. Like that scene, it's like you actually it wasn't just like oh Bond's sick. Like no, you like poisoned. They, like, really made you feel like, oh, wow, you can actually feel him being poisoned. Like, I think J.D. Craig really did a good job here. Um, so, yeah, then um, Vesper manages to save him. Which initially, uh, Le Chiff won the initial round because uh, she didn't she didn't want to fork, fork over more money, basically, for the, the game. So, yeah, but Bond... Uh, Merak, basically, she manages to help him survive, and uh, he gets back in the game. And I love how Bond gets back in the game. Very, uh, I mean, I think Daniel Craig, like, he really shows he could have been a better Bond if they let him, you know? If they didn't just, and I know I'm going off uh, of not seeing the movies, but I just have to mention that just because it's like, Bond, this should have just been a caution tale for like, the character, or like more of an explanation of why Bond doesn't have an attachment with women or a long term attachment anyway. They should have just did that. That's what this movie should have just probably been, and then the rest of them have just been Bond being Bond. You know, you have a Bond girl, or maybe like yeah, he he basically kisses her and gets with her that movie, but they don't like really make it like they love each other like that like, at least long-term. They should have just did that. Stuck to that kind of formula. Because, I don't know, man, I just sad Bond being depressed because his girl, his wife died, which, if you want to do something like that, maybe have it be a more inner depression, not a fucking, I don't want to see outward depressed Bond. So we'll see, like I said, I'm. who knows, my mind could be changed by next week, be like, okay, yeah, Quantum Solace is good. We'll see. Um... I've never seen it. So, but yeah, getting back to this film. So Bond gets back. He ends up winning the game. Um. Oh, throughout this, um, I do think Bond and Vesper had great chemistry. That scene, this was after uh, Bond uh, escaped. Uh, I think this is after, yeah, he got his winnings. and No, no, no. Before that, this is when he killed... Uh, the ship's uh, people, the, the dude with the machete. Bond and her, like, you know, had a moment in the shower. You know, I thought that was a good scene. Like, they had very good chemistry, her and Ava Green, who, my opinion, very underrated actress. I remember, like, she was everywhere at this time. She was in this. She was going to be in that, it, granted, it's not, the, not a great movie, but that shitty 300 sequel. But she's definitely one of my favorite Bond girls, for sure. Um, so Vesper ends up getting kidnapped by Le Chiff, who basically Bond... Um, oh, they also show you how he gets his Astro Martin, which I thought that was cool. Cool little, you know, Easter egg. And not a forced one. So yeah, Bond gets... Uh, nearly runs her over, because she's left, like, in the road, basically causing a crash. He gets taken... That this is where, like, for a two and a half hour movie, they this movie is paced very well. Like, it doesn't just feel like there's just you're just bored, you know. <coughs> and basically, the shift needs to get the password to. <coughs> basically bonds access to the winnings <coughs> it's like his bank password <coughs> and yeah they basically yeah this is where you get that scene yeah it was uncomfortable to watch man but it's a good that's how that's what a good villain should do though like make it like a little bit uncomfortable to watch like yeah he's whipping bonds balls basically forcing him but <coughs> i do like daniel craig in the scene he really showed like 
like that bonds like courage like yeah you know it's that it's like the modernized version you know how like in the movie where bond has is like you know maybe tied up and then like a laser or something's about or he's gonna get thrown in like some machine with a bunch of blades or something and bond's still like shit talking him and basically telling him like you need me because if i'm dead you're not gonna have the money and mr white's gonna kill you because mr he owes mr white money so but before you can get the password mr white shows up kills Le Chiffre. And I'll admit, I did not remember that as part. I thought Le Chiffre was going to be like in the end. They're not going to give this big end final, not necessarily fight, but confrontation. No. He just gets fucking shot straight up in the, the head. Done. But Vesper and Bond were left alive. Like, something was up. So Bond the next day gets bailed out by Felix. Yeah, we also get introduced to Felix. Well, I thought Felix in this movie was a good good casting. Um, who I love Felix Slider. I love like how you see him throughout the film. Like he's always been that tying thread throughout these movies. Um so um Bond and Vesper fall in love. And this is where Bond basically um gives up his MI six career. And bees with her for a year. And things seem all fine. Like, this movie, like... You know, they're making love. Everything's all fine. You know, they're on vacation. On, you know, every... You know, they're sailing together. But then... Um... She gets a call. And then... He gets a call also from M. Who tells him that the treasury... Is looking for the winnings. That, you know, that he won from the Casino Royale match, which she was supposed to return. And, you know, Bond said it, he, he returned it, but then he finds out that, no, it turns out that um, um, Vesper basically betrayed him and took the money, which is basically what it looks like. Which, I'll spoil it now, she basically gave the money to Mr. White to kill Le Chiffre to keep Bond and her alive. But, Mr. White kind of, it seems like he reneged on the deal because she was supposed to meet them and then she gets kidnapped by his men we get a big chase out in like an apartment in a like in a warehouse kind of building where a bunch of bombs explode in the building starting to like and basically explodes where there's like a bunch of water a building starts filling up with water she locks herself in the elevator basically forcing herself to die and bond like can't get her out um so Bond now back with MI6 has a one last conversation with um, M, who actually really liked this scene. You know, she goes into like Bond, like basically kind of essentially selling Bond. You're, it's it was basically never meant to be. It was kind of sad, but a very well done scene. So, and then he looks through her phone and finds out that basically she did it for him. You know, to keep him alive because she actually loved him. That's why she took the money. You know, I like how they made you think she betrayed him, and it was a good little twist. And then, um, Mr. White gets out of his car, and this is where you get this awesome fucking ending, where Bond, like, just shoots him in the leg, and then it says, Bond, James, like, just pops up all cool, and the music cues it, it's great. So, yeah, <coughs> I really, I really like this movie. <coughs> a nice solid reboot of Bond <coughs> a somewhat origin but not origin story I like how they did it <coughs> I thought you know Vesper was a great character Le Chiffre was a good villain only I think other criticism now that I'm thinking about it <coughs> granted I liked how shocking it was but I also feel like maybe Bond should have killed him just because Le Chiffre was kind of making it personal with him he <laughs> felt like Bond should have had the credit of kill. I get what they were going for, you know, because what well, we find out later. <clears throat> but it's still like maybe Bond get that satisfaction. I don't know. Maybe it's just a part of me that's like I wanted like a more of 
Bond versus Lachey. Because I, yeah, he, um, Daniel Craig and fucking Mads Mikkels had great chemistry, in my opinion. They, they had, they were, were, I don't know. There's a little part of me that kind of wanted to be kind of a reoccurring villain throughout this one instead of just him outright killing him, like something happens and he escapes, but whatever. I'm fine with it. Still love the movie. I love the, it is a love letter to Bond. It was a solid, like modernized Bond, but it still had that essence of the old school Bond in there. Vesper was a great bond, love interest. I thought her, him and have Eva Green have great chemistry together. Um, you know, her death's pretty tragic. Um, like I said, I have only my only little gripe is some of the action, the more of the melee scenes. I'm gonna be more specific, not the action scenes. I think like the chase scenes and stuff when they're shooting at each other or when they're running away, it's all good. It's when it's like the the fucking like close quarters fist fighting. It's when it like okay, this feels too Jason Bourne for the time, but whatever. It doesn't bring the movie down full. That's why I'm giving an 8.5. It's still a really well-made movie. The score in general is great. Mads Mikkelsen is Le Chiff is one of the best Bond villains, period, in my opinion, um, in the franchise. like he, he fucking killed it. So, yeah, I overall love this movie. I thought Jeffrey Wright's character, even though I, haven't talk, I didn't really talk about him a lot, but I thought he was... A, a solid because he really is only in that that section when they're in the casino when they're doing the when they're playing the game like besides that he's not in a that's why i didn't really talk about him a lot but i thought he was a good little addition um judy dench's m is great as always i love her in this i love her and her her and bond's relationship throughout the movie so yeah overall love this movie definitely recommend it um we'll see about quantum of solace i hope it's good I I think I've heard mixed things. I've heard some people say it's decent, but I've also heard it's shit. So I don't know. I hope it's decent. I'm, not, I'm maybe it won't be as good as this movie, but it will at least be a decent entry. We'll see. Because I think Craig was at least when he when he they like in this movie, from what I've seen, he was a good Bond. Like all the scenes when he's playing the game. That of course that last that ending scene feels like yeah that's Bond right there. So. Yeah, um, tomorrow I will be doing, like I said, Total Recall. I might even, maybe not next week, but some point soon, I might do the reboot, remake, too, because I remember not, I think for the time, especially with, when they were doing all a bunch of remakes, I thought the Total Recall remake was not one of the worst ones. It wasn't great or anything, but I remember being like, okay, it was okay. But yeah, I'm going to definitely do the original tomorrow, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, I have, I, I'll admit, it has been a long fucking time since I've seen this movie, but I figure why not do it, so I'll be doing that tomorrow, um, uh, yeah, so, Casino Royale is great, um, I definitely recommend it, I, I'll tell you all, we'll be, I'm going through all these Craig ones, so, anyway guys, I'll talk to y'all later, um, uh, peace out, cheers. <laughs> As usual, y'all. Talk to y'all later. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>